for decades to meet. From May the 1st, the demilitarized zone, the DMZ, will be transformed into what is called a peace zone. But as Patrick Falk will now tell us, North Korea may have agreed to denuclearization under duress. I think that it's, it's safe to say that North Korea is certainly not in a posi position of strength at the moment, and certainly of these uh, reports about the collapse of the uh, nuclear test sites uh, are true, uh, then it suggests that uh, really uh, North Korea has got nothing to, to lose here at all. I, I suppose from China's perspective, there is uh, concern that uh, the collapse of the site and the collapse of its uh, uh, military card there, uh, or, or card of aggression, uh, that it, it really uh, it's concerned about the stability uh, of, of the two Koreas at the moment. Uh, but, yes, it's not the only thing. China has put a lot of pressure on North Korea to uh, go through with these talks and to commit to denuclearization to some extent. And we've seen that uh, Kim Jong-un hasn't fully committed to that yet. He said that uh, tests would stop. And, again, if these uh, test sites have collapsed, then really he has no choice over the matter. Uh, but uh, certainly we've got to wait and see uh, until those uh, discussions with Donald Trump take place before we get an idea uh, whether we're going to get a full commitment to denuclearization. Russia, China and Japan have welcomed the agreements reached during the talks, although the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe did add a note of caution. We welcome the news that President Moon and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un had a serious discussion on the issues including North Korea's denuclearization today. We see it as a positive moment towards a comprehensive resolution of various issues regarding North Korea. Also, we express praise for South Korea's effort to realize this meeting. We strongly hope North Korea will take specific action following this meeting and the U.S. and North Korea summit. We will continue to monitor the movement of North Korea. And this was the U.S. president on Twitter. After a furious year of missile launches and nuclear testing, a historic meeting between North and South Korea is now taking place. Good things are happening, but only time will tell. Well, the North Korean leader, we understand, now back um, in Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea, uh, with me in the studio, Dermot Hudson, the head of the Korean Friendship Association. You've been to North Korea uh, 14 times. Yes, that's correct. Now, Kim Jong-un, several months ago, was threatening to, to bomb Japan. South Korea said he could aim missiles at the United States. So what has brought him to this position now? Well, uh, first of all, uh, he wasn't actually threatening South Korea. The DPRK has always made it clear that its weapons are self-defense if they're not aimed at South he Korea. He said it could do it, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, what's happened is uh, he's implementing uh, the decisions of the 7th uh, Congress of the Workers' Party of Korea in May 2016, and what he said in his New Year address. But, but um, what you've got to understand is it, it wasn't so very long ago that he was making belligerent noises, and now he's saying, listen, well, I'm a man of peace. These, Why? These were a response to the U.S. threats against the I, I know you believe DPRK. that, but I'm wondering why he's saying what he's saying now. Well, because uh, he's a man of peace. He doesn't want the Korean Peninsula to be the center of a third world war. In what sense is he a man of peace? In other words, why, why should we perhaps trust him when we, we know that he's had um, opponents liquidated, members of his own family, that um, there are accusations that um, his half-brother was killed on his orders, that people have disappeared, been blown apart by artillery guns. This is not a picture of a man of peace, so why should we believe him? Well, I mean, this, uh, what you've just said, uh, is false propaganda and as you, you use the word How accusation do you know that? but you, you yourself use the word accusation mm, but rather you, you'll be going further you're saying it's false propaganda how, how do you know that well I think uh, what you see taking place now disproves this false image that has been built up do you think perhaps you and other people who have supported um, this regime, this, this family dynasty, uh, for so long, are perhaps being taken in as well as the rest of us? No, absolutely not. And it's not a family dynasty. It's a leadership that's chosen by the people. Like I said, uh, two years ago, you had the 7th Congress of the Workers' Party of Korea, which uh, well, it's not really chosen Marshall by the people, Kim is it? As 
You know, they've no, only been there's only been three leaders or four leaders of the North um, since it existed. They're all from the same family, um, and there's no real opposition. Well, there's no opposition to them. But I mean, you, you could, uh, you know, in India. No, but you was said it, you said it's been chosen. You said it's been chosen family for a long time. Chosen by themselves. That's right. I mean, if you go to the DPRK, everybody supports the leadership. You see, the suggestion is that he's been pushed into this position, perhaps by sanctions. You're, you're suggesting the opposite, that he's a man who comes bearing olive branches, that he's, always, right. he's always wanted peace, and that the sanctions have made no difference. But he's perhaps in a position of weakness, is well, he Well, the sanctions haven't made any difference. I mean, when I was in Pyongyang in April 2017, August 2017, uh, you know, we... We saw Pyongyang, we thought sanctions. What sanctions? We couldn't see any evidence on the streets or in the shops that sanctions were having any impact. But that's because you weren't shown where they were having an impact, perhaps. You were just shown the things they wanted you to see. Well, I mean, uh, you know, pe people always say that. But if the sanctions were having such an effect, you, you know, that it was changing the DPRK's policies, you know, you would see some kind of evidence. You, they wouldn't be able to hide such a thing. Do you think, this has got to be quick, that um, he will give up the North's nuclear weapons without preconditions, that um, the American soldiers don't have to leave and that other suspected nukes in the area can stay? He's not going to say, these are my conditions. Well, what, what uh, has been agreed to is the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. That means also U.S. weapons, nuclear weapons, yeah. well, leaving had, the see, Korean he, Peninsula. Yes, he did say before that so that wasn't a condition, but we will that's, see. That's what the two leaders have agreed. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Now to other news. Uh, three Palestinians have been shot dead by Israeli forces during protests along the border with the Gaza Strip. That brings the total number of Palestinians killed by Israeli troops to 43 since protests began at the end of March. Hundreds were holding protests in the Gaza Strip along the eastern and northern border with Israel, demanding their right to return to their homes taken over by Israel. The campaign is part of what's called the Great March of Return and is expected to continue until May the 15th. That's the date of the 70th anniversary of the creation of Israel, which the Palestinians refer to as Nakba, the catastrophe. Well, let's go to my colleague Mohammed Mansour, uh, joining us now live from Gaza. We could see an awful lot of people behind you when we spoke to you earlier. Now we understand, and you can confirm this, um, if it has happened, that Palestinians have broken through um, the lines that separate the, the Gaza Strip from Israel, perhaps through the border or through the, the lines behind which they were being held, and that there have been other fatalities. Yes, I do. I do confirm that just before, uh, uh, nearly an hour ago, uh, many tens of Palestinian youth uh, has managed to uh, break through the fence between Israel uh, and Gaza. That led to uh, uh, a fierce response by the Israeli soldiers. They fired intensively uh, on those uh, youth. Uh, they, they call the, this Friday as the Friday of the rebellious uh, youth because they say that they want to dedicate this Friday and this action to the 40 Palestinians who have been killed, 27 of them uh, uh, were uh, 30 years uh, uh,